Welcome to Mad About Money. I'm Maddie Alexander Grout, and this is the podcast where we talk to interesting people all about their interesting money stories. Today, I am joined by the lovely Matt Hughes, who is king of video. Um, he's amazing. He does so many things, and he's got some really cool stuff to talk to us about. Um, but before we get into that, Matt, tell me a little bit about you. Uh, so I'm Matt Hughes, king of video, uh, which I'm king of video because the domain name was available um <laughs> that, that is the true story and um i help businesses uh, do stuff with video really it's largely focused on youtube now but um i've done all sorts in the past help people go live help people do zoom calls all, all kind of stuff related to video and that's because i had a video company for seven years amazing um i mean there are i mean visibility wise from some you know talking to me like queen of visibility yeah. um i should check it i should check to see if that's actually available as a domain name i quite like that <laughs> <laughs> well i did um, it tug in cheek and it, it just was and when i asked my coaching group if i could call myself the king of video and they were like just shut up and get on with it and i was like nice. okay <laughs> yeah just do Good it and, yeah. and and you totally own that as well yeah. um so i mean let's talk a little bit um about your money story and then we'll go on to like the youtube stuff in a minute yeah. um so what's your money story uh my money story is uh probably similar to a lot of people from my background uh, i came from a working class background um uh, my mum actually went to grammar school so her, her background was much better than mine but she got kicked out of home when she was 16 because she had uh, got pregnant and um so she grew up as largely a single parent even though she was married four times she got largely a single parent uh, with three boys and so um as you can imagine all the sort of normal stuff happens when you're three boys in a house with a single parent yeah um, lots of things that I don't like to admit like we used to be uh, shoplifters when I was younger weirdly and... we talked about that on the last podcast <laughs> yeah, did, did you yeah, because well, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we do did. Do you know what? But... I think um, it's really weird going to because it's the Tesco around the corner from where I am, like the mega store where, where it is. So it brings, but every time I go there, I still, I still remember it. We got caught by a security card once, um, and I, I, and I was like six, seven years old. I wasn't old when I was doing no. that. By the time I got to teenage years, we'd moved out of that area and, and in some ways out of that uh, council estate that we were on, but. It was just like a an logical, natural step for people on a council estate, and I I know that sounds quite sweeping because ev- lots of people break out of that stuff, but I think that environment that you're in, your options of life are very limited, or they feel very limited unless you've got good people around you. And unfortunately, yeah. I didn't at that time. Well, we we were talking about it from a from a dopamine perspective. Um, and from like a, an undiagnosed ADHD perspective yeah. um, in terms of the fact that, you know, the thrill of doing something really naughty yeah. and knowing that you could get caught, but you might not. Um, you know, there's also that that plays a bit of a part as well, I think. Yeah, maybe. I think I get that thrill from business now because it's so yeah. business is so unknown. Uh, and, and a lot of people talk about it being risky. I don't find it risky at all. I feel like being in a permanent job for 40 years is risky. Um, and by that I mean risking your the enjoyment of your life um, right but, um, but I think I, I didn't I didn't like it I didn't like it I didn't get any thrill out of it I, I remember being very anxious as a as a young lad um, and like I said I just didn't and, and as part of that money story I kind of knew that that wasn't the life that I wanted to lead and I, yeah. and so as I started to get into IT IT was my first career where I made most of my money really Um I realized that that was more interesting and, and actually strangely Maddie literally before this call my power went out and I was talking about um the ADHD brain and and how um I can't do like electronics and stuff now I get so frustrated because I'm I feel like I'm wasting my time I don't have the patience for it yeah. but when I was a kid and in, in sort of kind of like a broken household um and we moved house I moved house 30 times during my teenage years wow um I remember the one constant I had other than my best friend was um, was IT and I, I could mm. really focus on it. So I almost uh, autistically even hyper-focused on this thing. I knew everything you could get, everything you needed to know about IT and The Lion King. Oh, oh and The Spice Lion Girls. Lion King, best, best film ever. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, and The Spice Girls. <laughs> and the, I was in The Spice Girls fan club. I don't mind admitting it now. Who was your, who was your favourite? Um, Emma. 
and my favorite spice. Okay, yeah. okay. I did. Do you know what? I'm not sure. I actually had a favorite. I liked all of them for like very different reasons. Yeah. Um. But I think yeah, it's, I think it's different from a male perspective, maybe. But uh, yeah, Emma is my favorite. Um, yeah, I didn't fancy it. Still my favorite, yeah. actually. Yeah, she was cute. She was cute. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's a different story. Um. <laughs> so. So with with money then, so like growing up, not having very much, like yeah. how did you first start making money? Like um, from your so, job, what was the what was the transition between deciding? Yeah, so to... so various things. So it, thinking about my legal past, I, I used to sell uh, a copied DVDs and CDs at school. I don't even remember ever remember those days. You could get yeah. an album on a CD, CDR, yeah. and uh, we used to sell those. So I guess that's kind of my first entrepreneurial slash illegal um, activity. I didn't really th- see it as illegal at the time. Um, and um, and then when I got a proper job, I actually went to college. I went to three different colleges, and I couldn't get, I couldn't work in that environment. Uh, education is very rigid. Yeah. And I, and because I'm quite rebellious, I, I just couldn't deal with like just staying in school and, and doing those kind of things. I went to uh, co- one college for one day and I left after that. Um, so then I got an apprenticeship, because an IT apprenticeship, because I thought, well, that must be the logical way to do it. Um, uh, you lived in Leicester for a while, right? So the, I did, in, yeah. Um, so QE College is where yeah. I got my apprenticeship. And I spent four and a half years there. And I went from earning £75 a week as a, an apprentice which was huge at the time yeah then went to uh 14,000 pound a year and by the time I left I think I was on 15 and a half something like maybe 16 um but that was huge for me you know and and even during that time I remember when I got to 18 I, I got a credit card an egg credit card if you remember egg oh i do remember eggs i had yeah. one of those yeah yeah i and um maybe you're not like me but i had it and never paid it back had yeah, hsbc yeah, credit yeah. card never paid it back uh and that put those two debts as just individual debts there was loads of debts over those years um just hung around you know when i was trying to get mm. a mortgage i had um the ccjs and stuff that came along with that um but i was not taught about financial literacy really and uh, yeah I'm seeing quite a few people going and teaching that stuff now and I feel like it's so important because my final financial literacy this is God's honest truth my mum and my brothers taught me that I could get a credit card spend all the money um either give a different name to get another credit card or move house and and just leave the debt where it was and they would chase me forever do you know like, I did I did that is that why you moved 30 times <laughs> No, no, it wasn't. I moved 30 times because my mum was... um... Running away from her credit cards. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, a little bit of that. And also just because she had four husbands and we, you know, one of them moved in and out of the house over and over. Oh, God, Um, yeah. I mean, I was was the same. So, you know, I always knew deep down in my heart of hearts that if I borrowed the money, I had to pay it back. I knew what a credit card was, but I didn't understand the interest. I didn't understand how the repayments worked. And, you know, I, I racked up. Forty thousand pounds, and then I moved wow. house because I thought that they would never find me, and they did eventually find me. And then I had bailiffs <laughs> and all sorts. And yeah, yeah still, that, that even now fun. I still can't get a HSBC uh, card. Uh, I, I, and I mean, the thing is, I so during that time of the four and a half years I worked at QE College, I met Amy, right, and my wife, and um, she was from the background where you did everything you said you were going to do. She lived in the same house all her life. Oh, wow. um, she was one of four kids. Um, and then she met this guy that was like, oh, just, you know, get a credit card and don't worry about it, whatever. So naturally I got her into debt as well. And um, and she just couldn't understand this weird attitude I've got, I'd got around all of that stuff. But it was like, you know, the wheeler and dealer kind of uh, mentality. Yeah. Um, always. Um, and, I, and I think probably the biggest thing that changed it was having Poppy. So we've been together 18 months and we had Poppy. So I was 23, Amy was 21. And, and that fundamentally changed how I looked at money. Because I was like, I can't have debt collectors come to my house when I've got a child yeah and I I always say uh, Poppy saved my life because um I was also smoking weed and stuff at the time and and Mm. I I just stopped I was just like this is not if I'm really gonna be a good influence and a good example to this kid then I need to get my 
stuff together. I don't know if this is a PG rated podcast. Or no, nothing, you're all good. Get my shit together. Yeah, that, that's that's it. And I was like, um, you have met you know, me before, Matt. I know. Yeah. Well, I forgot to check. I normally do check. Um, but uh, I, it was at that time, and and so so I worked at QE. And the other good thing about working at QE is I was still going through a rebellious phase. I had black hair one side, um, bleach blonde the other side, uh, straight down the middle. And, and I was doing stuff like that. And the people I worked with were like, what's going on? I used to go out and get drunk till 2 a.m. and then show up at work at 8. Um, you know, I was doing all of those things as I, as I tried to figure myself out as an adult. And then Poppy came along and then it it kind of just all came together. And I was like, OK, I'm going to take this seriously. Started to get better jobs and started to be able to uh, manage my finances better, but but still not well enough. It was only until I got a really well paid job that I was out of that um what is it borrowing from peter to pay paul the debt you know, cycle yeah yeah i was kind of like i would get paid i would spend the money i would borrow some money off my family a week before i got paid i'd get paid pay that back go do it and it was just just over a cycle over, yeah. it's paycheck to paycheck is what the americans call it right and it, yeah yeah did, did you ever get into like one of those payday loan type cycles? No, uh, fa- thankfully I didn't. I saw, I saw some people, someone actually came to work for me um, and he worked, he was an apprentice as well. And within three days he was asking us for money. And I fa- later found out he was in payday loans and it just seems horrendous oh, that whole yeah. cycle because that those companies are like legal loan sharks. I, I really feel awful. like they are. Yeah. You know. I, are they gone I now? Spent- um, I think so. I think, oh, I mean, okay. some of them are disguised as things like Clearpay and Klarna, but, you know, like, yeah. um, I mean, I think the ones that were really, really bad at the time, like Wonga. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I got into a Wonga cycle and my God, it was like every single month I'd have to borrow more money from Wonga to pay myself. But then it was the and, interest. Yeah, um, yeah. And it just, you, you just, once you start, you're just perpetually in this like horrible payday loan cycle. Yeah. Um, and you, you can't do very much about it unless you get like, I mean, I was very, very, very lucky. I was working in recruitment and I used to get some quite big bonuses. So I just cleared it all one time and then yeah, yeah. somehow God knows how, but managed to kind of get out of that cycle. But it, it took about three years to get out once I was in. Yeah. I, I totally Horrible. get it. I, I think the uh, I think the worst situation for me of all of them, the thing I remember the most is I had a hundred pound council tax bill, and the debt collectors turned that into six hundred pounds. Mm. They came to collect. They put a levy on my car. My car was worth three hundred. What I know now, I knew they would never have took the car because it would cost them more. But yeah. uh, they put a they put a um, clamp on my car. And they made me pay six hundred pounds for for a debt that was a hundred pounds. Oh my god! Um, and it was horrendous, you know. Like, and I I remember I, I actually paid the debt in front of them, the council tax debt, and they said, "Well, we've not um, that won't be recognised in our system, so you still need to pay the other five hundred. And I had to borrow mm. it off my um, my mother in law at the time. Um, Things but like I think that, that would never happen now, would no, they? no, like, they wouldn't get away with that stuff now. No, no. that was like. I don't know, 2007, 2008. Um, and of course, with the knowledge I have now, they would never get away with that. But equally, no. when I think about it, like um, a couple of years ago, sort of just after lockdown, I got into about 40 grand's worth of debt. And um, and to me at that time, that was manageable. Mm. And yet if I go back 12, 15 years before, I had 600 pounds debt and I I was in tears on the phone to my I mother know, right? to, to, to borrow that because I'd never wanted to go in. I'd got a kid with Amy. I didn't want her to know that I was not managing my finances. Yeah. When I'm when I'm the dad of a grandkid, you know. Um it's it's interesting. It's really interesting actually, the mentality of debt when you understand more about it and you understand yeah. more about money. So the first time I was in forty thousand pounds worth of debt, yeah. I was constantly fearful for my life like I was going to lose everything like it was the worst thing and mental health wise I was on the floor um and then my business failed last year I got into the same amount of debt again and I was like oh that sucks balls um but I know how to manage money I know how to manage debt it's fine I'll just you know pay pay off what I can um and I pay off chunks of it every now and again and it's still ticking away but it doesn't stress me out like yeah, I am yeah. physically like the least stressed about that debt that I could possibly be. I'm making my minimum repayments. If I never pay it off, it's all good. I know that I've got a plan. Um, and it's just like, 
it's it's there it's just the thing yeah. um you know and, it, and it's it's changing your attitude around it to like oh my god i'm in so much debt i'm in so much debt i can't afford to do anything but when you're managing your budget and you know what's going out you know you can afford the things that you need you know you can afford to pay the debts off it's a lot easier i think yeah and i also think we're really fortunate now probably probably in 2007 the ways in which you made money were different yeah i know and it doesn't seem like a long time ago it's 20 years right roughly but actually the way that's, i mean that's, 2007 was like three years ago shush i think we talked like... about it and realized we must have been in the same clubs around that time i think um, we were you know, i think we were yeah. and like weirdly like i remember the first time i met you i was like i really recognize you yeah i yeah. swear like i was probably like oh he's quite cute <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from I'll across a darkened room <laughs> um so I, and the thing is i um i just think that I had eBay I think was kind of the only real way to make additional cash you know like mm. as a side hustle yeah and so I had a, a eBay account I was constantly buying and selling things uh, I also started a, a IT it was called click IT solutions I had these little flyers and I went flying around everywhere and that worked really well I used to get like 40 quid cash in hand for doing jobs you know just to bring in extra cash uh, late later that uh, business that I started ended up getting me suspended from a job because they didn't like me doing two things that conflicted what is that like I mean I think that the culture around like moonlighting as we like used to call yeah, it yeah. um now I think employers are absolutely ridiculous if they don't think that people are trying to side hustle somewhere else yeah yeah totally um, yeah. there's so many enough. available yeah. yeah exactly yeah but I, yeah. I I think um so now so now when I look at it you know like you can make money from the moment you wake up you can do you can fill in surveys and get a couple of pound and I know, I know it's not a lot of money but mm. if you did enough of them and I think about all the spare time I had that at the time which was so much more than now I could have done those things where you know writing um just picking up my phone and being able to start a business immediately is just insane I, f- I find the opportunity so big now and yeah. the issue is and I felt this actually most recently when I got into debt is uh, I always describe debt as a cloud over your head. It's mm. constantly there. The moment you wake up, you're thinking about it. Uh, the moment you go to sleep or you try to get to sleep and you're thinking about it and maybe you don't sleep. Um, but, and and so it, it becomes kind of all, cons- all consuming almost. Mm. Yeah. Um, but the thing is you have to face it. Like uh, the best thing I ever did was, was look at look at it as a total oh there was a great thing maddie i don't know if you know do you ever did you ever use money dashboard yes yeah oh, i recently closed i was gutted when it closed because I had, i've got like a bunch of credit cards and stuff like that and what money dashboard did is it put it all in one place and, mm. and frighteningly it showed you your whole debt but the great thing about it is it you could once you see the big picture you can kind of see a logical way out yeah um, you, you know places like clear score do that as well Oh, do that. Yeah. I know like with open banking now, you can connect a lot open of things to it. Yeah. I mean, open banking is like, it's so amazing. Yeah. Um, you've got, you've got places like clear score for, for credit ratings and they show you every single last debt that you've got. Um, oh, totally, I, 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 totally money's a good one. Yeah. Really and good. I mean, I use clear score for my credit rating to check on mm. that. Cause I, so I like that, but it, it, but it was more about the fact that it, it collated everything and then it it kind of highlighted as well where you're wasting your money so I could see all the takeaways I was having and and various things like that and it's like if you really needed to cut back when you see collectively and I think things like QuickBooks when you if you connected everything to that it it would show you the same sort of thing but um that just to me was a bit of an eye-opener like this is where Mm. if we really needed to um trim the fat sort of thing we could do that using those apps to get rid of all the subscriptions to stuff that we don't use anymore and that kind of thing you know absolutely like I checked my subscriptions this morning and I I realized that I had a subscription to some some guy right on the internet (laughs) some guy on the internet some guy (laughs) messaged me and he was like oh I'm going to give you a free copy of my book but you have to download it from Amazon Kindle so clearly he was getting commission from yeah. like Kindle or something um, because I all of a sudden then had a £29 a month subscription, which came out last month. And I was like, how do I cancel this bloody thing? So anyway, yeah. I worked out how to do it this morning, cancelled that. And then I thought, oh, while I'm here, I'm going to go through everything else. I saved myself £79 yeah. 
Yeah. And that's really cool because do you know how do you know what else is 79 pounds? What? Last CRM, which is the <laughs> CRM system that you run, which we're going to talk about later. Okay. Um and so that means I've cleared up my way so I can pay for my CRM system, which yeah, is also yeah. epic, by the way. Um, for anybody listening. Um, we will talk about that in a minute. But um, I want to know with the when you got in debt in lockdown what was yeah. what was that from was that from a business closing or... uh, so it was a, a combination of things so obviously during lockdown i i i've been an it contractor for 12 years and during lockdown i um i stopped contracting i wanted to focus on the business full time and it just was the wrong time because i quit uh, contracting and my um, i closed my old business february 29th 2020 which was two two weeks before the pandem- pandemic. Mm. During that two weeks, we did. Do you, re- do you ten- regret that? Because you could have got maybe a some form of support. No, we we still did get the support because we'd oh, not nice. <laughs> because stuff was still in place and still closing. Yeah, actually, that support did land, which was quite nice. But nice. we made ten grand in the, in sales in those two weeks up up until lockdown, and so we we when I quit, I knew I'd made the right decision. We made. 10 grand in sales my target for the month was 10 grand so it's like great we're doing amazing and then and then we got locked down and then it was like crap like our whole business changed we had this nice office that we were in we were having to pay for had a member of staff that was uh, I didn't furlough we actually continued working uh, through the time um and I just it just slowly crept up and slowly crept up and um then my daughter we homeschooled and we had to pay we paid something like four to six grand in um GCSE exams and those other things which we split across all the credit cards because it literally maxed us out Mm. and then when it got to that um sort of 40 grand and we we were maxed out I just said to Amy in the Christmas I was like I'm just gonna have to go back contracting now that we we need to pay this off we need to get out of this because it was I was losing sleep at that point over it Mm. and um it took four months to pay it all off uh, which again, I, I am very, very fortunate to That's be able to, to do that. Um, but the difference between Matt in that December and Matt in May was mm. huge because I, yeah. it's um, it's almost like I talk about the cloud, but it's almost like you're in a desperate situation. I, I was in desperation. I had this. I talked about it recently. Actually, I had this thread that was really negative about me and what had happened is I sent an email out to the people that had unsubscribed from my email list so they'd they'd opted out right and I just said look we're changing businesses we're changing focus we're going to be doing this thing specifically now do you want to opt back in and it was a a little sequence of three emails I shouldn't have done it because they'd opted out Uh, but half of them opted back in so obviously it it worked in in the way Uh, but of the other half there was a good amount of people that I'd stopped working with that didn't really like me. And so there was this thread of like, it must have been about 80 comments. Oh. Uh, and it was just like, let's lay into Matt thread. That's what it was. Oh, no. Um, and who could uh, not like you? That's rubbish. <laughs> well, it's true. It's true. It happens. Um, but I, at that point, I was at the worst part of my life. Mm. I think in terms of like desperation, and this huge debt that I got. And... um. I, it just kind of really sent me over the edge, you know. When I think think yeah. about people doing this, so, so you know, so I see these threads happen every now and again. And I'm just like, firstly, be a bit more professional. Like, if you're putting stuff like that on the internet, right, it's going to come back to you. Because don't absolutely don't, don't, don't be think a for a moment that I didn't um, screenshot every one of the people that commented. Yeah, uh, and, I, and I remember. Um, but also, um, you just think about if there's a person at the end of that. Even when absolutely. people do it to celebrities, I'm like. Come on, this is what. What if they saw? What if it was your daughter or your son that was getting this stuff? Like, what? Right, how would you feel yeah. about it then? You know. Um. So yeah, it was it was tough, but um, but we got out of it. That's that's the main thing we got out of it. And and I, and I think there's sometimes you can think about happy debt. My um, I just whilst I was talking, if you saw me on my phone, then I was looking at my um, my mortgage. I've got a two hundred and ten thousand pound left on my mortgage, and you see that as like a happy debt because it's a mortgage, right? You're not having yeah. to pay rent. Um. But it's still a huge amount of money um, and it's just perspective. When you look at these things, the debt and what it is, it's just perspective. Uh, some things are good and some things are not so good. It It is. And it, it's it's crazy. Like, you know, I've, I've got a bit of a plan. So I, I've got about 17 grand's worth of my 35 left that I yeah. got from my last business closing. 
And I'm like, do you know what? I'm not stressing about it. It's there. Uh, my plan is that we are we're selling my husband's mum's house at the moment. Yeah. Um, and when we sell her house, we're basically I'm going to step away from mortgage responsibilities for a bit just doss around because yeah. my credit rating's a bit shit now because you know when you randomly land up in 35 grand's worth of debt again and you're debt down, free yeah. it's, it's not ideal um and i couldn't pay all of it off in one go you know some of the repayments that i had were like the only reason i'm paying all of it but the only reason why my credit rating went down was that one of the debts the business debts was three grand a month yeah and if you offer a payment plan even if you're paying it unless you pay the three grand a month off yeah. They count that as a partial payment, which affects your credit rating, yeah, which is yeah. shitty, really, because you think about it. It was a business debt, you know, just annoying. Was you a limited company or not? I was. Yeah. And this, this oh. is a really this is a really, really good lesson for anybody to to learn. I thought if you had debt as a limited company, limited by liability, you didn't have to pay anything. Always read the small print. Unless it's director's that, loan. Yeah. No, no, no. It wasn't director's loan. Wasn't oh. any of that. Nope. Small, tiny print, personal guarantee on all of the debt that we took out. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, we may as well be the sole trader than if you put personal I know, guarantee. right? I, I, I know. wouldn't put a personal guarantee to those kind of things. No. Oh, but yeah. I suppose if you've, ta- if you've taken um, loans and stuff, yeah, that I can see how that would have to be. Some yeah. Kind of guarantee. I mean, it's it's a tough one because I, I'm the same. I was paying five grand a month because um, I had took too much out my director's loan. So I know how that could be crippling as well. Um, mm. But I think, like, like I talked about earlier, you know, like it's just different levels of debt and, and different ways you yeah. view it. And um, yeah. what, what I like about it the most is seeing the interest payments when you pay. Someone said to me once about paying a card off in full. Mm. And what I used to do is go after the heaviest one. And this particular thing i read i don't know i read or a video and maybe it was one of your videos um but i watched a video somewhere and it said pay off the smallest ones first because gives you the motivation you, to carry on you, not only do you pay them off but the you dopamine. stop having so many interest payments exactly like, yeah oh, wow that's great so my my american express is my biggest one and it's the worst in in terms of interest but paying off all the others just kind of it, it so it's like decluttering your house it felt the same yeah yeah I, I it's amazing suddenly, I, yeah I'm I'm a big fan of paying the small guys first. Yeah. Um. So you know, I I started when I did my debts. I started with like the store cards and the you know the the payday loan type stuff yeah. first. Then I moved on to the credit cards. Then I moved on to the loans. Then the car finance and yeah. it 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 really worked. Um. And I'm doing. You've exactly just got to be disciplined, right? You do, and that's that is the key word. And as yeah, as an yeah. ADHD, yeah discipline is not always the thing that we uh that we no, decide no. to the route we decide to go down um but do, do you know what though weirdly so i started taking my meds last week yeah. um i'm on like day 13 or something like that and um the focus the like i've noticed such a massive change in like my impulse spending and impulse decisions like somebody really? asked me to get yeah somebody asked me to go on a retreat to las vegas and i was like oh i've got the money for that that sounds really good and i went let's write down the pros and cons what the <laughs> fuck has happened to maddie <laughs> and yeah. then i went no actually it's not the right time for me to do it this year but i'm gonna put it in my plan for next year and i was yeah. like oh that's that's not a normal thing i don't do things like that. <laughs> well we it's we so in weird. december we were like um I said to him, I said, we need to focus on paying these debts, just get it off and then like not lot um go into more gigs and festivals and stuff. And and we did that for a month. <laughs> and then like honestly, if you looked at what gigs and, and stuff I'm going to this year, my oh, I've got so many. My cool. like but the worst so weirdly, yes, we were on um we were on a part like out for a party for my friend's 40th at the weekend. And I, I did a TikTok about this because I genuinely have no idea how it happened. But I said to um, I said to my friend, I was like, oh, are you coming to Isle of Wight? Because um, me and my friend, we, we're glamping. Um, yeah. She was like, we're, Maddie, we're going to Pink. I was like, what? She said, we're going to see Pink in London. And I was like, well, I'm not. She was like, no, you are. You are coming. You said you were coming. <laughs> and my other friend was like, yeah, you paid me for it. I'm like, I didn't. I'm not going to see Pink. I'd be yeah. way more excited if I was going to see Pink than I actually knew I was going to see Pink. Helen was like, 
you, you are definitely coming. Yeah. And I was like, shit, have I double booked myself for a festival and a gig at the same time? Luckily, it's different weekends. Yeah. But I have got so many. I've got like three festivals. I've got four gigs. I'm like, yeah, till the end of the year. And I've got loads of business stuff as well that I'm doing, yeah, like yeah. speaking gigs. My husband's like, write it on the calendar because otherwise, like, and I'm, I'm going to the rugby um, in Bristol on uh, on Sunday. And I had, I forgot to write it in the diary. And of course, like, that means that my husband, he's of course working. So we had to like yeah. do the whole, mom, we need some childcare help. I'm going to Bristol. <laughs> well, I mean, we, so we send calendar invites to each other when we book stuff. So it's in nice. our calendars. And we also have a Notion doc, which shows us everything over the year. Because uh, the other thing about it is, you know, when you do your post at the end of the year and you're like, these are the things I've done this year. Oh, it I was love so, that. It was so hard to remember. So now we just have like a, uh, notion document and then what i do in it is because it's notion if if anybody doesn't know what notion is it's like um it's like a notepad but like on speed you can do tables and um like asana board type stuff that and sounds so organizing a whole board <laughs> a whole business isn't it right so we've got a whole business one and then we've got a personal one but what i do is we so we put the dates in it we do it by month so we put the date in and what it is and then you can create a new page in that so then we put the tickets in there so now we have one place to go and get the tickets, the hotels, all that. I mean, we've had, it's honestly changed my life because there's so many things that I book, like you said about pink, you know, I book it ahead of time. And then I'm like, crap, did I get a hotel or did I get the train tickets? Whereas now uh, I know, like, put them all in the same place, away you go. I've I've actually in the past bought gig tickets and forgotten to go. <laughs> like that's how bad I am at organizing myself that's I was like I, I I just I just remember this one time <clears> like me, me and my husband we, we booked to go and see Flogging Molly in um yeah. in Bournemouth and like all of a sudden like it was the day of the gig somebody posted off to see Flogging Molly and I was like shit and it was like so six I... o'clock <laughs> it was like six o'clock and I'm like oh God, I can't yeah. be asked to drive to Bournemouth at six o'clock it starts in like an hour we'd have to leave now so we just ended up not going ADHD yeah. tax at its bloody finest like. yeah. and, and I think you're just um uh, bringing it back to the money thing like I, I, I think you find strategies to to work on that stuff you know yes. I, I like the the notion thing is is definitely a strategy for me to do stuff um in a logical way in an organized way when realistically like you've just described I'm just a mess. I, I we we were we booked Robbie Williams tickets at the start of the year, and about a month ago, I looked at it and saw he was touring, and I said to Amy, I was like, "Oh, we should go and see Robbie Williams," and she went, "Matt, have you looked in Notion?" I said, "No." She said, "We've already got tickets, mate. We booked them three months ago." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> we're going. That's good then." I saw <laughs> him at Isle of Wight last year. He was really, really good. Yeah, we actually. saw him last year. He was great. Yeah, really good. He's he's such a performer, isn't he? Like, yeah, yeah. And that's and that's why I'm so excited. And the thing is, I'm like, I'm really excited about going to see Pink. She like does like yeah. like zip wires and trapezes, and she's like an incredible <laughs> performer. And I'm like, how have I yeah. forgotten that I've done this? Like. Oh, oh silly woman so um so yeah and of course now I've been roped in they were like oh well now you're coming Maddie you can drive seeing as you don't drink anymore brilliant like that now I yeah feel like I, I... oh you've just reminded me of the point so the point was that like so we said this at the start of the year that we wouldn't do this and we've done it and so when we talk about discipline of managing the finances like we've still there's still a little bit that I can see creeping back in um in the credit cards we've paid a bunch of credit cards off and we've been doing yeah. that for a long time um, and there's a little bit creeping back in now and it's just that that's the discipline that you need to go okay I need to make sure then uh, I've I've paid this thing off make sure I'd... and there are only little things so you know a gig ticket a couple, 100 quid a couple of hundred quid or whatever mm. but then it's paying them off and making sure that you don't yes. fall back into that same uh, trap because I've still not paid the American Express off so yeah yeah, that was the it's... one that that was the last one that I had and I'm like okay I need to get that done again now yeah and do you do you find like I mean I I have the thing where I'm like oh I I know I've got some money coming in for the business so I'll book yeah. this event on this credit card um and then I'll pay it off in full <laughs> and then you're like it comes around to me so... and you're like oh I'll just pay the installment and then you're like no 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 yeah I'm yeah yeah thing, you've got a bit so. <laughs> well the funny thing is I actually paid my American Express off um and it's 15 16 grand uh last month but I only paid it off because we're booking the venue for tube fest yeah. so I spoke to the venue and I was like uh, can I pay by my American Express first and they said yes 
And then I was like, okay, so I get points, um, uh, Avios points, and, and I get a flight as well, like a free companion flight, if you spend over 10 grand. So I was like, well, I took the money out of the business account into the personal account, the exact amount yeah. that I would uh, use to pay in the venue. So you can be clever and smart about it. I, I mean, I don't think um, the way you just described it, like, I don't think that's Robin Peter to pay Paul. That's more like managing no, cash no. flow. And actually, the bonus of that is that I got to pay off my Amex in full. So as far as my credit credit ratings uh, concerned, they see a full payment, um, which I've not seen for a while. Um, <laughs> I also get the points, and the debt is debt that I would have paid. It was it was a uh, what I call like liquid cash in my yeah. account. I got yeah. from ticket sales and stuff. So it all kind of counterbalances really nicely, mm. um, but it's just knowing that that's going to go back out again I, I still need like the strategy to pay the rest off so my amex goes back down but i think being able to do that and uh, allow my credit rating to see me paying it off in full um is a good thing and it's a yeah, def- definitely sure. a, um an advantage and being fortunate to be in that position well that segued quite nicely into talking about too fast yeah <laughs> tell us all about that uh yeah so i uh, and uh i love that you're asking about it Maddie, because it's definitely for you um we i go to america to go to video marketing conferences there's n- there's mm. nothing like it in europe in the uk and I, I went to social media marketing world last year in march i realized i bought the domain name in march and i was at this event and i was like Do you know what i've come all the way to san diego and i, and I love traveling so like it really ticks off my um enjoyment factor but it's like san diego is 11 hours flight um you need an extra couple of days to get get over the jet lag yeah. it's a week out of the business it's like why is there not nothing in europe you know we can fly pretty much most of europe in 4 hours yeah. no jet lag pretty much at all um so I was like, maybe I could start a video marketing event. And I, I come up with a name straight away. I was like, TubeFest, it's going to be a YouTube thing. And um, and then I sat on it. And I sat on it and sat on it for a good six months. And I was like, mm, it's going to have to be another year. I'm going to have to build an audience, all that kind of stuff. And then it got to October and I was like, I was going to another event in the US. And I was like, do you know what? Why should I wait? If I wait, someone else is going to do it. And I'm going to be annoyed yeah. that they've done it. Yeah. So so by the time I got to October I was looking for sponsors and speakers we've got 15 international international speakers we've Amazing. got um we've sold 120 tickets already we've got sponsors on board some brilliant sponsors on board uh, people like Opus Clips do you know Opus Clips yes yeah yeah so it lets you take an interview like this and make like a, a wicked short out of it um again great for you for TikTok stuff yeah so I was um, going to ask you about this actually because yeah so um, they're a sponsor they're actually coming to the event as ah, well so that's amazing I'm going to get them to give us a do us some kind of deal for people at the event so nice because because I'm I'm looking for a way to 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 do these videos and keep and put them in shorts it it, it does it with AI so you literally drop the video in there you pay the fee you get like so many minutes per month um so podcasts unfortunately do eat three minutes and then it just it will take like we're side by side now it puts them on top of each other that's what i need and then yeah. it puts the captions in and gives you a score of how it how viral it thinks it will go oh uh, wow it's, it's really, i love that yeah, yeah. it's it's really really good i know this is not like promo for opus but but they're just one <laughs> of the examples of the sponsors we've okay, got you i'll know, get them to sponsor this podcast we'll be all right yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah i can put you in touch with connor he's a good guy that'd be cool um <laughs> so uh you know the what what I wanted to do is bring the best sponsors like that really aligned well with what we're doing. I want to give the attendees a good experience. We've got an after party. Um, it's a really nice venue in Birmingham. It's I'm pretty sure card. I've booked a ticket. I think I have. Yeah, I feel like you have as well. I was just talking I to you. Feel, like you I mean, this is going to be another pink situation. <laughs> pink enough to, to, before, gonna gonna like, email, am, I, yeah. am I going <laughs> to that? Like, I just yeah, yeah. literally booked my big festoon ticket as well, and I'm like. That's a whole year away. I need to remember that I'm actually going to that and I have paid for it. <laughs> well, just... in in true um in true style of having a notion document with all my attendees, I can reveal, Maddie, that you do have a ticket. 
Get in. There you go. Good. And you bought it <laughs> on the, the twelfth. You bought it on the eighth of December, by the way. So that Brilliant. was a long. What's the, I can what's understand. The date? I'll put it. In my uh, it's, it's May twenty third. You better put it in your calendar. May the twenty um, third. Yeah. Amazing. So that I mean, the thing is, you've. I was going to book a holiday event. then. Jesus. Oh, so good. So glad. Yeah. Good. I'm going to have to send a reminder to everyone. Um, the great thing about it is we so we have created a creator track and a business track. So I wanted to bring those two groups of people together. Yeah, uh, a lot of creators are not business owners. They don't think like business owners. And a lot of business owners don't know how to be creators or don't know what it yeah. takes. And so um, it's great that you're coming. You, you know how the TikTok algorithm works. You know how it yeah. how to, to go viral, that kind of stuff. And I think actually, if I look at the attendees in the room, there's lots of people like that. And I think you're going to have some of the best conversations because the other thing yeah. about it is you being a TikTok expert, right? Like you, it's very hard to hang out with other people like you. Like it, there's no, no real spaces for that to happen. No. So we, um, and you know, there are, like, I mean, I, I'm kind of pretty friendly with the other people, like, like the people yeah. who you've got talking at your events speaking, and stuff yeah. like that, you know, like all of the people. You do naturally do find them, don't you? Yeah, we do. We do TikTok in a different way. So I'm yeah. very much about helping people who have never done it before to yeah. grow to about a thousand followers so yeah. that they can start monetizing it. That's my audience. Yeah, that's mine for YouTube, people, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. you've got people like uh, like Michelle Haslam, who does like, um, you know, big, big shout out to Michelle. I love Michelle. Um, you know, she she helps people to grow and scale and, you know, be like proper influencery. Like that's not that's not really what I do. I help people to kind no, of get their either. foot on the ladder to kind of get started. Yeah. Um, because I all of my stuff that I do, it's all about visibility as a whole. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm just about to la launch my new membership, um, Invisible to Influential, which is aimed at neurodivergent entrepreneurs. It's all about helping people to have to find their inner voice, basically, yeah. be the go to expert in their niche, um, show up on the social media channels, find the right ones for them get support, help them to, you know, get on that viral train. Um, but it's also about, you know, starting a podcast. It's about uh, writing a book. You know, it's, it's all about all of the things that put together your visibility strategy. Yeah, and I'm so excited good. about it. It's very exciting. That sounds good. And I, it's I think really most people... cheap as well. Like really cheap. I don't know yeah. if I've screwed myself over here, but it's £7 a month. Oh, oh is it? Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah right. I've got one called the Creator Meetup, which is like a community of creators. It's not not aimed really at neurodivergent. It's kind of I mean, more I broad. I need to join that actually. Yeah, well, you get a free free um, lifetime membership for being a two press ticket holder, so you should oh, join. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I've sent it. Sent an email to you, so I sent it again. I don't read emails, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you just got thousands I... of, of unread emails. Yeah. Oh, I That's... do because the thing is, I'm I I, I am so. Like I miss stuff all the time. I think another yeah. ADHD tax thing is that like the other day I was looking through Did my you say um, ADHD tax. ADHD tax, yeah. Oh, I love that. You not have you not heard of it before? No, no, I haven't, no. Oh, it's it's basically the cost associated with having ADHD because we forget yeah. things, we forget to pay them, we forget uh. subscriptions, like all of these things. Um, I missed out on a four grand influencer contract because I didn't read an email. Oh what a twat. Hilla. <laughs> That is luckily killer. really 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 luckily um i emailed them i was like i'm really 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 sorry and they booked me for something else so it's all yeah. good yeah but yeah. i was just like i am so they were like maddie we've seen your content we know you talk all about your adhd we understand I'm like, yeah, yeah yeah i mean <laughs> oh, that, that is the good part of it is, <laughs> you know people um people do get it and i do think that makes it a little bit more um forgiving but yeah. you know what, and, and I see tax, but I see it as like a kind of a negative thing. Like for me, I look at the positive sides of of being neurodivergent and think mm. of things like the fact that I I don't mind taking risks or that I don't hold on to stuff in my mind mm. for as long as my wife does, for example. I'm not digging her out. I'm, she's got a great memory and it, it serves us really well for a lot of things. Um, but But for me, I'm like, I can just be a little bit more... I don't know if this is a saying that you say, but you know, like airy fairy. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a little bit like I can just, I can just make a decision. I can run with it, and you know, it's like we'll run and we're gone. Um, yeah. And I, I don't need to worry about all of the things that could happen or what should happen. And I genuinely believe that's down to uh, not my entrepreneurial spirit. I, I, the more people, I I've think it is. I, yeah, I mean, well, I. I think entrepreneurial spirit and ADHD business owning is is actually kind of one in one in hand because like yeah, yeah. 
I I've always felt like I am the most creative person. The only thing that I would say since I've started taking my meds, my creativity hasn't gone, but it's focused. Yeah. For the first time in my entire life, I can basically see what my entire business strategy looks like for next year without yeah. getting distracted by shiny things. And I'm like, oh, because I wanted to put on an event um, and I, I, I'm still thinking about it. I wanted to put on a ADHD neurodivergent money in business festival. Um, and it's still something that is on the cards. It's still definitely going to happen at some point, but yeah. it might not be right now. Um, and it, it's it's an interesting thing. Um, you know, I've all of a sudden just gone, right, my, you know, my, in terms of my business strategy, I am getting as visible as possible, growing my growing my email list so that I can launch this membership. And I'm going to focus yeah. whole hog on this membership. And although it's seven pound a month, you know, I know people who have got memberships who are earning 30 grand a month from a six quid a month subscription. Yeah, yeah. And I know that I can do that. And I want to make it big. I want to make it valuable for people. And, you know, I launched my waiting list like three days ago. I've already got 60 people on it. Nice. And I'm like, this is good. Like before I've even launched, I've got 60 people who have said, yes, I'm going to do this. So, yeah, yeah. it's going to be I exciting. Think the, only, the only downside, and uh, uh, this is this is a sort of a note of caution from what I've learned. Yeah. Like, you know, I've got a couple of low cost memberships as well. It's just not to, it's just to have a very clear pl plan of what you want to do with it and to not get bored because yes. obviously people like us get bored we and then do. and then take our focus away from it whereas if you build it in so that you know that there's like a regularity to the stuff that you're putting in there yeah and, so I, know I, you, I know you've got a va as well that helps with this stuff so yeah um just Sophie's, just maintain Sophie's life Sophie's life. yeah yeah uh, it's just like, momentum but... keep the momentum up and keep the interest up you know yeah i mean i i think in a way it's like the community that i've built in mad about money yeah um you know i show up there every single day we put new content in every day there's like yeah. engagement going on there's stuff going on um i think it's going to be very similar to that um yeah. i because i've got so much knowledge in my head i can just pop in somewhere throw something in and then leave again and yeah it's it's not too bad um, I think I've, I've run memberships before that have been really, not really expensive, but like, you know, 50 quid a month and people expect blood. Like, yeah. you know, they, they just want the earth and, yeah, yeah. you know, you do all these free things for them. And like, I mean, I, one lady, I thought I remember, like I was helping her with some visibility stuff and it, it was, it was very similar actually, the membership to what I'm going to do now, but just more yeah. expensive. Um, and she was like, uh, I need some help with my cover photos. So I so I basically, I did all of her LinkedIn cover photos. I did her Facebook cover photos, all of those things. And she just kept coming back and going, I want it different. I want this. I'm like, for fuck's sake, I'm not your graphic designer. I don't work for you. <laughs> I've offered to do this for free. Like, yeah. I've got other things I need to be getting on with. And she's like, but I pay your membership. And I'm like, but that's not something that's in the membership. Get yeah, over yeah. it, love. <laughs> You've got to, um, my wife does this boundary work um, as mm. part of, she's just, it's for children really. But um, the, the way she talks about it, I think most adults probably need it as well because yeah uh, boundaries not having fixed boundaries and the, and the worst part about it is when you do have boundaries people see you as a bit of a bitch and they're I like know, oh, why right? have we got these but it's just because they're not used to people saying no as a full sentence yeah. um, and I'm, and, um, I'm one of I'm not very good with my coaching clients um yeah. I have very very slack boundaries because they've got yeah. they've all got ADHD um or, or other neurodivergent conditions and they think yeah. of ideas all the time um and i am always there i'm basically like just my only rule is don't message me after nine o'clock so don't pick up yeah. my phone after nine o'clock but any other time if you need some help with something as long as you're paying me your monthly coaching fees i'm cool with it yeah um and one of one of my clients messaged me the other day she was like upset you are you really pissed off with me i was like no mate i've just got a headache just you know just i didn't reply like in the instant second like i normally do <laughs> i think i left it like an hour and a half and she was like you're mad with me aren't you <laughs> that's the only problem with adhd brains is like we yeah, do yeah. automatically if somebody doesn't reply we assume that they hate but us I, I think even that is, a, is just a boundary issue you can just say you know yeah because the worst part about it is you both feel bad then in that instance, yeah then. I yeah, think you just say, was, you know, cool. actually, this is it. This is how I operate. Like, don't, don't assume that there's any any problem. Exactly, um, exactly. So, um, so um, 
what's so so you've got two pressed on the 23rd what else is yep. going on uh so we've got creator day uh, i don't know when this episode will go out but we've got creator day april 11th yeah before uh, then you're all good you know a little bit about that maddie i do um, i'm excited as one of the speakers um so we created today is 40 we've got 40 speakers again across two tracks so it's very similar to um to fest and that we'll have a business and a creator track and it's one long live stream on those two tracks so two live streams really um at running at the same time and you can jump between the two and uh we've got all sorts of sessions from blogging to uh, uh, YouTube ads to TikTok um, sales, all sorts of things. They're really, really uh, valuable sessions. 40 people trying to manage 40 people is a nightmare. Um, but I, I think it will be really good. And and the thing we're going to do is both of those things every six months. So Amazing. two first every six months, uh, create a day every six months. And it will be like, so like three months between each. And it nice. just means that with Creator Day is because it's a virtual event, we can reach more people worldwide, yes. uh, which I was really keen yeah. on. So like a couple of our speakers in Australia, we've got a couple in America. And that's free as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's free. Yeah, totally free. Amazing. Uh, so so it's free. And the only thing we're selling, I know a lot of people sell replays and that kind of thing, but we're selling, we want more people in the creator meetup, which is our, our membership, the one, yeah. the one I said you got for free, uh, because um that's how we'll build the community you know it's 12 pounds yeah. a month 97 pounds for the year um and i really think that if we can do that the, the long-term plan for the create meetup is that we do in-person events around the uk nice um, you know hopefully long-term around the world but around the uk initially um because i just think we need to meet more people like us Absolutely. and that's what that's what we're trying to build really yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of collaboration over competition. I think yeah. that even if somebody does the same thing as you, they do it in a different way. Well, they could, um, even if they did it exactly the same way as you, people you're both people. different people. Yeah. Yeah, just, Absolutely. you know, some people are going to love me, some people are going to love you. Hopefully they love both of us. I um, think they will, because we are but, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> But um, king, of, king of video and queen of visibility. We're, I, like, I'm so going to go and see if that if that domain's available. Yeah, yeah. You should, How many yeah. domain names do you own? Just out of a curiosity, because I think I own about 700. <laughs> Did we talk it? So I have a condition called gas, right? Which is gear acquisition syndrome. So as a video guy, I buy gear all the time. So I tell people I have gas often. Nice. Uh, I definitely have domain acquisition syndrome, but it's not as funny as it does. No, um, no. I must have a hundred domains. I bet I'm in yeah. triple figures now. I God it's, knows how much I spend on them every year. I know, I know. I think actually I probably need to go and like look at some of the ones that I own that I every don't now and again use. I go through and turn them off like auto renew because yes. like, I'll, ne I'll never use that. Or well, that was a good idea in 2017, but it's a really bad one now. Do you yeah. know what I bought? The the best one I bought, and I this is tunnel vision, right? So uh, during um, the pandemic, I wanted to have a short URL. You know, so you, when you send links out, it's just a short URL. So I was trying to find lots of different, um, lots of different things, and I bought King of Vid. So it's K O V I D, and I bought it during the pandemic, and I could not see anything wrong with that name. And then my wife looked at it, and she was like, "Matt, it says COVID," and I was like, "Oh yeah, it does. Yeah." So I never used oh, it. <laughs> but I bought it because in my mind it was King of Video that's brilliant um, I, at one point I had this like really like before I came up with the idea of mad about money um for some reason I was at, like somebody I was wearing a flamingo dress and I went to an event and somebody was like oh my god you're like a flamingo you stand out in the crowd and I was like oh that's what I'm all about visibility standing out in the crowd so yeah. I, was, I was like I'm gonna call it mad flamingo money so I bought that <laughs> as a, I'm like Jesus Christ Maddie like um, and I've still got the the videos that I made that had flamingos in them. Um, but like, and I always want like flamingos are like my spirit animal. So yeah, at, yeah. still at some point there has got to be something to do with me and flamingos. But and, and sometimes it works out right. Like I uh, tube fest I bought a year ago. I wasn't sure I was going to do it, but I bought it because I knew I, I was interested in. Yeah. Always uh, thinking about it. I also bought last CRM in 2017. We Let's bought talk it a little we, bit before well, we, we go. started doing it and then we never did. And then when it came back, we actually did all the branding and everything, the same branding we've got now. And we bought it back in 2023. So nice. I mean, that was meant to be. So yeah. last CRM, I mean, first of all, I'm going to rave about it because I think it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Good. Um, 
all in one CRM, affordable, yeah. one monthly payment, you get everything. And the thing that is amazing and that I find, because I'm constantly growing my email list, like yeah. all the time, I've got 10,000 people on my e- email list and it's growing and growing and growing yeah. and there's no limits, is there? No. So we are, we are a white labeled high level um, CRM. Uh, for anyone that knows uh, high level, there's plenty of white labeled CRMs out there. Uh, the thing that we do different is that we do 24 seven support. Mm. So there's a little support bubble in the bottom right that you can speak to. And they're really knowledgeable. We've actually used those supports. We pay for it. It's a, an external company and we've learned stuff from them. That's how good nice. they are. And, um, and the other thing is we're trying to build a community around last CRM. So because we're marketers and we paid for like active campaign in the past or MailChimp, we know how expensive those things get yeah, as, they you, are. as you grow your list. Like for, for someone like you with a 10,000 list, it's it's almost like cost prohibitive if you're not making loads of money directly. From I your had, list. when I had active campaign, I had 30,000 on my list. You can imagine wow. how much that cost yeah, a month. Yeah. It was like six, I think it was about 600 a month. And I was just like, yeah. ah, horrible. So, so we so when we saw it and it was like unlimited everything you pay for sms if you send a massive amount of emails there's small cost as well and um you pay for phone numbers but it's so like tiny those numbers you know yeah the messages, like 5p a message or whatever that it just makes it really affordable and and i think there's so many good things that are coming or have come like we've just started to get a whatsapp integration now so you can get a whatsapp for business number that's cool um, there's things like the course integration is amazing. So you can create your own courses on there. Like mm. there's so many different platforms that you can replace with this one platform. You know, it, some of them are not as feature rich as like a Kajabi or something like that, that has everything, but it's getting there and it's getting to the point now where I'm like, even we've got um, our community on circle and I'm looking at it now and thinking, hmm, I think within a year we're going to be able to replace that community on circle with just last CRM and, and put it all in one place. So can you have memberships on there as well? Memberships, courses, uh, landing pages, email marketing, SMS marketing, chatbots. It's just, it's just all in there. And, and we should probably have, we should probably do another podcast just about last CRM. Yeah. Yeah. We should start a last CRM podcast, me and Emma. That's a a, a conversation. So if if anybody wants to know more about last CRM, download mad about money. Cause we've, we've got, um, we've got a little, uh, little affiliate link in there. So uh, we do amazing. Uh, So uh, Matt, how do people get in contact with you? How do people find you online? Uh, so I am uh, kingofvideo.co.uk, as we alluded to, the domain name was available. So kingofvideo.co.uk, my podcast is on there, my freebies are on there, and you can get links to everything else. So uh, it's definitely a good place to go. Amazing. Um, it's been so good to have you on. Um, Slow by, Maddie. You. Can't it's wait. It has, hasn't case, it? By. It has. I can't wait for two first. Can't wait Good. for everything else. Create a day as well. So uh, get those dates in your diary. Um, for anybody who's listening to this on um, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, please hit the subscribe button, um, especially on YouTube. I mean, Matt, I've grown. I've got 70 followers now. I'm doing really well. Um, I feel like I'm like winning at life. Um, there's going to be more on there as well when I work out how to do my shorts because that's the, that's yes. the thing. Um, so yeah, give us a follow on there. Um, if you're not following me already on socials, uh, Mad About Money official on TikTok and Maddie Alexander Grout on YouTube. Uh, where else are we? Uh, LinkedIn. That's the chat. Anyway, we will see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>